Good evening. Hello, hello, hello. Good evening. Hello, teacher. Good evening. How are you doing? I'm great. How about you? I am driving. <laughs> I had a long day today. Oh, my goodness. You don't believe. You, don't, you will not. Uh, you will not believe me. I am driving in Surf City. No way. <laughs> Good for you. What are you doing there? I am driving uh, from a church in the countryside. Ah, that sounds like a party. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's so great. Man, I good am for you. To have... Lucky one. <laughs> okay. Well, be, be careful, I, please. <laughs> I am feeling like Dominic Toretto. <gasps> Says yes. Furious, huh? <laughs> okay, don't forget that there is nothing more powerful than family. <laughs> All right. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Pretty good, guys. Um, let's see. Welcome, everybody. How are you today? Good, good. Hello, Lucy. Nice to see you. How are you? Thank you, teacher. I'm good. Thank you. How are you? I'm great. Thanks for asking. It's Friday. Do you have any plans for the weekend? Yes, I have an activity in my daughter's school. Oh, okay, sounds interesting. And I can see Nelson too. Hello, Nelson. How are you? Good evening, teacher. I am exhausted, teacher. It's Bye, Friday. Okay. I know, yeah. I know. <laughs> Any plans for the weekend? Tomorrow I have to work. Oh, that's true. That's true. And on Saturday, uh, on Sunday? Um, I don't know. Too. Okay, you don't have plans yet. Uh, not. <laughs> All right. Okay. And I can see Fatima. How are you, Fatima? Hello, teacher. How are you? A little tired. <laughs> Yeah, I know. It's because it's Friday, guys. I know that you might be very exhausted, right? And do you have any plans for the weekend? No yet. No yet? Only working on the platform, practice English. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> uh -huh. Maybe practice English. <laughs> okay, sounds good. Let's see who else, who else, guys, camera on, please. I can see, oh, I can see Hector. Hello, Hector, how are you? Hello, teacher. I'm fine, how are you? I'm great, thanks for asking. Uh, do you have any plans for the weekend? Um, no, teacher, I have a lot of work, a lot of job, work. Work? Any, uh, yeah, work, work. I'm work. Oh, okay. I don't have a plan. <laughs> All right. <laughs> anyway, but I hope you can rest at least a little bit. A little bit, a little bit more. <laughs> that uh, in the in the week is la is is uh, uh a few few time for for take rest, and and the weekend I have a more time for maybe a uh, take a rest. Or see a little hey, watch TV, mm -hmm. but work, work, work <laughs> like a, Rihanna. Like wah, Rihanna, wah, wah. yeah. I don't understand <laughs> what she said in that song. <laughs> yeah, oh, that work, work, work. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty weird. Okay, but sounds good, guys. Remember that it's Friday, so let's try to relax a little bit. Okay, always try to participate in the class so you don't feel like bored. 
the more you practice, the more you participate, the shorter you will feel the class. If you don't participate, <laughs> you will feel the two hours like an eternity. But if you participate, if you are active in the class, the class will be shorter, believe me. Okay, so thank you so much for being on time. Thank you so much for the one who has the camera on. The one who don't have the camera on, I'm waiting. I'm waiting for you to turn on the camera. And I can see Mirna. Hello, Mirna. How are you? Hello, teacher. I'm fine. And you? Thank I'm you great. for asking. <laughs> Welcome back. Thank you. <laughs> how, <laughs> yes, how is your... was a listener. Yeah. How is, uh, how is your son? Yes, it's okay now, but it's viral, viral, oh, viral. Oh, the virus, virus. Is, yeah, is the a, virus, virus. Yeah, but it's uh, viral, oh, virus, it's virus. How do you say viral? Is the same virus? No, because virus is like um, <laughs> the tiny reason of the illness, uh, right? Okay. But if you want to say viral, it's, it's the same. Oh, viral. Okay. So you say yeah. viral. Yes, and virus. The viral. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, just a virus. Virus. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah, I'm glad that he's exactly better. Exactly what I have today. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm still sick. <laughs> yeah, my goodness. But do you? But I'm here. <laughs> yeah, my gosh. Thank you. So, but you, you have medicine, right? Yes, actually, I have oxygen here in my house. Oxygen. At the oxygen, sorry. Just because at the beginning, they thought that it was COVID, but the test is negative, so it's just like viral. <laughs> my gosh. Yeah, maybe okay. it's the weather. I think that the weather will change. Yeah. A lot of change. Yeah. Maybe raining, or maybe it's a lot of. It's hot, very hot. Oh my god. Yeah. I, 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 I feel they give me, they give my, me my problem is turn little. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean today I have sore throat, but when I listen to you, Erica, now I, I feel better. I mean I just I'm so worried for you. <laughs> no, don't worry. <clears throat> so you went so. you went to the hospital. Yes, they give me 10 days off, actually. Well, like a mini vacation, you deserve yes. it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, try to rest uh, a lot, okay? And take all the pills that they give you, please. I I want you to be healthy, okay? As soon as possible. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, bless you, Erica. Thank you. But... Bless you, <laughs> Thank you. but Thank you so much. Teacher, guess what? I have enough time and I finished the platform. <laughs> you have a problem with the exercise 3.5. I don't know what is happening, but it doesn't no say no my answer. I'm going to share it. Actually, <laughs> that is one of the exercises that we were resolving. I, I, if I'm not wrong, yesterday. I'm going to share again so you can see what's going on there. Um, yeah. But you see, positive thing, right? You can finish the platform at least. That, that's great. But yeah, Erica, please be careful. Okay, try to rest, try to eat healthy and be careful, please. Um, so everybody, all of you be careful, all right? If you go to a very crowded place, uh, wear a face mask, okay? I know that nowadays nobody likes to wear, wear a face mask anymore, <laughs> but you do it, please. I want you to stay healthy, guys. Now, talking about that exercise, um, let's see. So, Jasmine, is this the one? Uh, yes, that is. Okay. Uh, what I was saying yesterday, my recommendation, guys, because remember that when you have to type in the exercise with one letter that is wrong, everything will be wrong. So, yesterday, I was talking to your classmate that 
the first sentence, you just have to identify the first clause. For example, that is the first one. So you can copy, paste it. Then remember that we have two options. You can use semicolon or you can use the capital letter. Let's try with the semicolon space. Then the transitions that we got here is as a result. Copy it, again, paste it. And then remember that you need a comma, space. And then let's go for the second clause. Again, the same process and paste it at the end. And then let's check if it is accepting the answer. All right, in this case, it doesn't accept it. Okay, let's verify why. We can try it with the point. Hmm, capital letter. Okay, let's see. Yes, in that case, it's accepted. So remember that the platform is set to accept one answer, okay? Así que prueben con ambas opciones, with the semicolon or with the point. But my recommendation in this exercise, guys, is copy and paste, para que estén seguros de que sí lo han escrito bien, okay? Because one letter is wrong, everything is wrong. In the second sentence, for example, we can try to do the same. Uh, here is the first clause. Okay, then this is a transition. So the same, let's try with the semicolon, space. We have consequently, okay. Oh, but it's lowercase. Don't forget a comma, okay? And then we just need to add the last clause. Don't forget to include the period at the end. So let's check if the answer is correct. And yes, it's correct. In case that the answer is not correct, instead of the semicolon, you can try with the period. Then capital letter and check the answers. Okay? Okay. Uh, so Erica, try, all right? And if it is still giving you issues, let me know, please. Now, um, I was checking the platform yesterday, guys. You told me that there is a unit, right? That it doesn't give you... Um, the 100%, right? Como que le falta un punto y no les da el 100%. So, I was checking y a los que ya hicieron ese, esa sección, esa unidad, if you have 95%, se los redonde al 100%. Así que, good for you. No worries, ok? Ahí yo sé que es la plataforma a la que no les alcanza a dar los puntos. Uh, that should be a mistake. But no worries because I already added the 100%. Pero eso es solo para los que ya llegaron al 95%. Si van por 75%, <laughs> of course, no se los voy a redondear, right? Así que lleguen al 95% y entonces sí se los voy a hacer llegar al 100%. Uh, do you have any questions about it? Nope. Yes. How many weeks? Uh... No, um, <laughs> I don't understand it's funny. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, okay, but <laughs> just because you're sick. Uh, guys, basically the next week is the last one. Okay, so the next week is Friday. Next week is the last day. So if everything goes well, if we don't cancel any class, uh, so we are going to be finishing on Friday next week. All right. So Thank guys, you. are you ready for the next level? Yes, teacher. No, teacher. <laughs> no. Teacher, I I have a difficult when 
with the verb uh, form noun. Ah, mm -hmm. actually guys, I understand that topic is a little bit complicated, okay? Um, we can try to analyze that. One word can be an adjective, can be a noun, or it can be a verb, okay? So it's a little bit complicated. Um, let me see if I can share with you a picture where you can find it a little bit easier, but let's see. Mm, I don't find it. There is a picture, but I cannot find it. Let's try with this one. Esta no es la que les quería mostrar, but I cannot find the one. To turn from a verb into a noun, it's a little bit complicated because there are different rules. Ok, no todos los verbos o todos los nouns se forman de la misma forma. No es como poner una regla y decir, ah, ok, para que un verbo se convierta en un noun, le vamos a agregar ER, for example. No todos siguen la misma regla. Right? So, for example, look at here. In this picture, for example, look, tengo el verbo add. Y yo quiero que ese add se convierta en un noun. ¿Qué le agrego? Addition. Pero vean el verbo agree. Si quiero que agree se convierta en un noun, es agreement. Entonces, ¿ven algo en común aquí? Well, no really, right? So, para convertir un verbo a un noun, o un adjective a un noun. So basically, guys, no hay como reglas específicas. Cada verbo es como su propia regla. Cada verbo va diferente. My recommendation, y los entiendo porque también ese fue uno de los temas que a mí me costó. ¿Y qué hacía yo? Dictionary. If you go to lingue, for example, okay, imagine that you have the verb Eh, I don't know, distribute, okay? Distribute, I think that that is a verb that appears in the platform. So, in this case, I have here, me está indicando que ese es el verb. But then you say, okay, but I don't need the verb. I need the noun. So, ¿cómo puedo saber yo? ¿Cuál es el noun? Ok, let's find it out. Le voy a dar clic aquí en distribuir. Y aquí me empieza a buscar las diferentes formas en las que yo puedo decir distribuir. Ahora, si se fijan, aquí dice V. Esa V significa verb. Ok, ahora, ¿cuál es distribuir? A noun sería... Distribuidor. Y aquí aparece esto, sustantivo. Eso significa que este es el noun. All right. Aquí lo tengo. Look. Entonces, el mismo diccionario nos está diciendo cuál es la función de esa palabra. If it is a noun, or if it is a verb, or if it is an adjective. So, in this scenario, my recommendation is. Hagan uso del dictionary. And of course, it's difficult. It is. But little by little, guys. Poquito a poco nos vamos a ir aprendiendo algunos. Y ya después es como que va a ser un poquito más sencillo. Irlos transformando de verbo a noun. O de noun a adjective. Pero para iniciar, hay que intentar hacerlo con el dictionary. ¿Ok? Ok, thank you. Uh, do you have any other questions, guys? Because that exercise that Fatima mentioned is in the platform, okay? If I'm not wrong, is in the unit number four. So you have to be careful with that, okay? Any questions so far? 
Okay, so guys, um, <laughs> eh, I don't want you to feel disappointed. Tampoco quiero que se me desanimen, like, ay, teacher, mucho cuesta. So guys, yo creo que ya han avanzado mucho. All right? Y creo que lo más difícil ya lo hicieron, porque creo que el nivel beginner es de los más difíciles porque es donde les están bombardeando de una gran cantidad de información, right? Que los tiempos gramaticales, que el vocabulary. So, no se me rindan ahorita, ¿ok? Ya avanzaron a la mitad del intermedio, básicamente. Ya están por terminar el nivel intermedio. Eh, van a ir al intermedio 5. Así que básicamente están a punto ya casi de iniciar el advance. Así que, a I mí, mean, han avanzado bastante. Y creo que hasta el momento lo están haciendo súper bien. Han mejorado muchísimo, de hecho. Y creo que hoy hasta suenan como más confidence cuando están hablando. Ya hablan más, ya no se ponen tan nerviosos, ya ni les alcanza el tiempo cuando vamos a los breaking rooms. All right? Así que, ánimo, guys. You are ready for the next level. ¿Ok? Ready for the next level? Oh my God. Oh, yes, t-shirt. <laughs> ah, bueno, a los que me digan que no lo voy a volver a repetir, entonces, Intermediate 4. <laughs> Come on, guys. You are more than ready. Okay? Don't be negative. Let's be positive. Now, we are going to start with today's class, but first, I'm going to check attendance. So, everybody, when you listen to your names, Say present. Um, Adriana Escalante. Oh, I think she's listener, if I'm not wrong. Okay. Carlos Abrego. Present. Okay. Christian Alexander. Present. Okay. Erika Yasmin. Oh, she's sick. Sorry. <laughs> Fatima Denis. Present teacher. Okay. Germán Alexander. Present teacher. Very good. Hector Francisco. Present teacher. Very good. Isabel Hernández. Okay, very good. Eh, Iván Guzmán. Present. Okay. Jamie Raquel. Present. Very good. Holman Girón. <laughs> Okay, very good. Uh, Lucy Natalie. Present. Okay. Magdalena Escalante. Okay. Uh, Mirna Elizabeth. Present, present, present. <laughs> okay, Magdalena. Uh, Mirna Elizabeth. Present. Okay. Nelson Antonio. Present. Very good. Oscar Armando. Okay, and Rosalina Alvarado. Okay, very good. Do you remember the topics that we studied yesterday? Uh huh. Yes. No. A little bit. I remember the last topic. Remember what was it? it? It was uh, first conditional. When you Very use good. a statement or a clause and simple present and the other one and simple future with will. Very good, exactly. We are going to continue reviewing the first conditional, but also we are going to include another topic and we are going to combine them, okay? So everybody, can you see the presentation? Yes. yes. All right. Yeah, so today yeah. is June 9th. We are finishing the week number three. And today we are going to finish the unit number three. So guys, one more week and it's over. Um, this is a topic for today. We are going to explain safety measures related to different processes at a warehouse. So we are going to talk about security measures, uh, different accidents that can happen during or inside of a warehouse. 
And this is our class objective. So I need a volunteer, please, for reading the class objective. Class objective. Participants will be able to unders, unders, understand vocabulary related to safe, safety, measure, and warehouse. Very good. So that is what we are going to do today. So we are going to see vocabulary, be ready to write it down. Okay. Yesterday, we were talking about different issues that we can find as a manager in a warehouse. Do you remember which issues we talked about? Uh -huh. communication. Yes, can you repeat? Well, lack communication. Very good. Lack of communication. Yes. That's yes. what I can see. Mm -hmm. Okay. The lack of communicator and the other departments. Very good. What else? The lack of communication could be in two places with, uh, with the employees between their self, selves and between departments. Very good. Like, uh, like the classmates said. Exactly, sounds good. What else? Do you remember any other issues that we can face? Uh, tie the manager or management. Management, yes, pretty good. Look, as you said, right? Uh, we can have inaccurate receipts or purchase orders, lack of communications between uh, the employees, lack of cooperations in the departments, time management, and also the space, right? When we don't have a good organization in a warehouse. Excellent. Now, also we were talking about the first conditional. If you remember in the first conditional, how many clauses do I need? Two clauses. Two clauses, okay. The first clause is the one that is going to have the word if. So do you know what is the grammar tense that I need in that one? Do you remember? For the first clause, uh huh, a simple present. If Very. you if you start with if. Correct. Exactly. Now the second clause that is the result in which grammar terms is going to be. In future. 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 So can I use be going to? No, no. Simple future. You said will. Ah, okay. Or uh, won't. Will or in negative? Won't. Won't. Correct. But why I cannot use the be going to form? Because, because if you use, oh, so it first. Okay, Ivan. The, the second clause uh, expressions as uh, prob probability. Probabilities. Pro excuse me, probability. Probability. Mm -hmm. <laughs> probability. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. So remember, guys, that when we are using first conditional, we are just talking about future possibilities or probabilities you are not 100% sure. And remember that if you use be going to, it's because you are talking about plans. So you are more sure about that future. That's why in the first conditional, we don't use be going to, okay? Now, we are going to see another option to work with the first conditional, 
instead of using if, there is another structure that we can use. And that is what we are going to check right now. If you got your manuals, the information is in the page 31. And here we got another option for the first conditional. Instead of if, what is the other word that I can use? Look at this. When. When, okay? So you can use both. Imagine, um, let's take some examples that we got yesterday, okay? If, for example, some of the questions that we studied yesterday, it was, what will you do if you can sleep tonight, okay? So you answer, ah, okay, if I can sleep tonight, I will. Do you remember? What would you do? I will. Uh huh. Complete the sentence. If you drink can sleep, tea. <laughs> okay, drink I will tea. drink tea. A tea? Yeah. Mm, tea, you cannot tea. say a tea. It's tea. tea. <laughs> <laughs> yes, because it's uncountable. Pretty good. Now, instead of saying if, I can use the word when. But be careful. When changes a little bit the sentence. Because imagine if you say, when I can sleep tonight, what do you think? Do I need the word tonight here? Cuando yo no puedo dormir esta noche. Mm, what do you no. think? No All right. Sentido. Exactly. So recuerden que when es para time. So it's not necessary the word tonight. So we can simply say when I can't sleep, I will drink tea. So you can use both, but depending in the meaning. Recuerden, el when puede cambiar un poquito la oración, but you can use both. It's like in the example that we have here. I need a volunteer, please, for reading the example. When? Teacher. Yes? I have a, a, a little question. <laughs> yes, go ahead. And in some case, when you use will, do, another another word, is for a start the question. In this case, if it's not for a start question, it's not for main question, it's not for if, uh, if uh, I win the lottery, I don't know, I will be rich. Mm -hmm. Not this not question, this is affirmative sentence, if. Yes. Remember, guys, that when we are talking about the first conditional, we have two clauses. And we can combine. One clause can be in affirmative and another clause can be a question. Recuerden que aquí las clauses son independent. One clause can be in affirmative, the other clause can be in negative. Let's take the example that Hector provided. If I win the lottery, <laughs> so this is affirmative, okay? Cambiamos el subject. En lugar de I, I will say you. If you win the lottery, look, what will you do? La oración con if is not a question. Is affirmative, but remember, this is one clause. And then I have the other clause. And the other clause, if you want, you can keep it as a question, you can keep it in affirmative, in negative, it doesn't matter. Cada clause is independent. Understood? Yes, teacher, of course I understand. 
<laughs> Excellent, pretty good. Okay, now, as I said, we can use when instead of if. I need a volunteer, please, for reading the first example. Can I? Yes, please. Okay, when there are in inaccurate purchase orders, customer satisfaction will be compromised or customer satisfaction will be compromised when there are inaccurate purchase orders. Thank you. <laughs> it sounds like a tongue twister. <laughs> yeah. <But> remember <laughs> what we talked yesterday. We can switch the order. All right. We can start the sentence with the sentence that is if or when. So podemos decirlo así, right? Y ponemos la oración en future al final. Or we can switch. En lugar de empezar con when, empezamos con la oración que está en future. Right? Y ponemos la oración que va con when or if at the end. We can switch the order, but the meaning is exactly the same. Okay? Imagine in this scenario, instead of saying when, I can replace that word and I can say if. If there is inaccurate purchase order, customer satisfaction will be compromised. You see, we can change it. We can use both. Now, uh, let's see the next example. I need a volunteer for reading, please. The number two. Fisher, sorry, I have a, a question. Yes. Yeah, Yes, you change the structure. You can change the the structure and for the sense in in the sentence. For example, you can start when there are an inaccurate, or you can start or with future, and then the this is the this is the the meaning that this. You this can phrase. yes, you can change it, but the meaning will be the same. Let's see a very quick uh, in simpler example. Imagine if you say, if I have time, <laughs> I will finish the platform. Oh, yes. Say, okay. Erika, say passive or active voice. Is it the same or not? Mm, not really, because in mm -hmm. the passive voice, you need the verb to be and the very past participle. So it's totally different. The passive voice right. is... Yeah, it's totally different. Okay, so look, in la primera oración, I start with if. Or you can change the order and you can say, okay, I will finish the platform if I have time. So look, okay. basically I'm saying the same sentences. I'm just changing the order but what do you think is that the same meaning or it did change yes it's the same meaning also exactly. it's the same it's the same yes. does you start in in future or or in, in, in simple, simple present, present. exactly okay. you decide mm -hmm. said the see and everyone no problem now according to this box there is another change that we can do Instead of saying if, we can use when. When I have time, I will finish the platform. Or I will finish the platform when I have time. Okay? Okay, thank you. Pretty good. Thank you. It's clear now. Thank you. Excellent. Okay, I need another volunteer, please, for reading the second example. Yes, please. If there is a lack of communication between employees, productivity will decrease or productivity will decrease if there is a lack of communication between employees. Very good. Thank you. So look, it's the same example. 
Okay. Now I can see um, in the chat and some of your classmates is asking, right, that it sounds like a passive voice. Um, but remember, guys, that in the passive voice, we need the verb to be and the verb in past participle. So that's why it's a little bit different. And if you see in this case, the same scenario, we can start the sentence with if, or we can start the sentence of future. All right. Uh, important volunteer, please, for reading the last definition over here. Only one, please. Teacher. Thank you, go ahead. Notice that the when if clause is expressed in present tense and the independence clause express future tense with will. Exactly. Important. Be careful, guys. La palabra if or when will be with the sentence that is in simple present. We cannot add if at the sentence that is in future. Mm -mm. Okay, we cannot do that. So we will use if in the sentence that is in simple present. Understood? Yes? Any questions so far? Questions, questions? No teacher, everything are clear. Everything is clear. Excellent, very good. Ready for the exam, right? No. <laughs> <laughs> ah, but you don't have questions. <laughs> Never we are ready for the exam. Ah, come on. <laughs> okay, let's have a practice so this topic can be a little bit clearer. Okay, I have some sentences here. Remember guys, this exercise is also in your manuals in the page 31. I have these sentences here. I wanted to rewrite these sentences using the first conditional. So imagine I say here, the organization of the duck is bad. Time is wasted over unnecessary tasks. I want to use this sentence, but I don't want to use if, I want to use when. So what do you think? What will be the simple present sentence and what will be the future sentence? Remember, the simple present sentence is the action. The future sentence is the reaction or the result. So what do you think? What would be the best option over here? Hmm. Maybe in the first, when the organization of the dog is well, time is, was, is wasted over unnecessary task. So you think that the first sentence is in simple present, but the other one? is not in simple present, it's in past. In, in, it has to be in? In future. Ah, yeah. exactly. So look, we are going to say, when the organization of the duck is bad, look, ya no decimos time is, we will say time, Will, will be wasted. Exactly, very good. Okay, how about the number two? In the number two, we are going to use if. So what do you think, guys? What is the action and what is the result? Can I? I try. I I try. try. Go ahead. Is the, is the financial department sent in a curate report? Money will be lost. Mm, okay. What do you think, guys? Do you agree? I agree. Are you sure? 
<laughs> and yes, remember, simple present is the action. If the financial department sends inaccurate reports, what will happen? The money will be lost. Okay? Now, pay attention in this one. We have the verb to be, and I have the verb in past participle. Aquí si podemos decir que tenemos passive voice. Okay? Now, number three, I want to use when. What do you think, guys? What will be the sentence here? Uh -huh. What is the action? And what will be the result? Could I try the chair? Yes, please. Um, if the warehouse if the warehouse space is lim, lim, limited, limited, um, will be um, will be this organization. No. There will be. Ah, there will be this organi this organized. This no. organization. This organization. Okay. I don't so, understood that really. <laughs> Let's analyze it. Now, the first sentence will be in simple presence. In this case, we have to use when. when. So we are going to say when the warehouse space is limited, what will happen? There will be disorganization. Habrá organización, guys? If we don't have a space in the warehouse, yes or no? No, because no. limited. Exactly. If I don't have a space, I mean, there will be disorganization. Okay? Is it clear, the number three? Se entiende? Yes? Yes, teacher. Are you sure? I, I was confused with there is and there are, but ah. it's clear, it's clear now. All right. Remember, there is, is in simple present. If you want to use it in future, it says this, there will be. Number four, I want to use when. So guys, what do you think? What will be the sentence here? Uh -huh. Volunteers. Can I? Yeah. All right, Fatima, go ahead. When the employees open box and count items. Items? Items. Time will be wasted. Very good job. That's it. So the first sentence is the action. The second sentence in future is the result. Pretty good job. Okay, and the last one, I want to use the word if. So guys, what do you think? Uh -huh. I can try. Yes, want. go ahead. Okay. If there is a lack of communication between employees, the time to fulfill orders will increase. Hmm. Will increases? Will be increases. Hmm. 
Uh, Remember in that increases? increases is in third person because it's third person. It's in simple present. That's why it's in third person. But if it is in future, do I need the letter S? Increase. Ah, <laughs> yeah. very Increase. good. Yeah. That's why. Be careful, guys. Remember that when we use will, the verb is always in the base in the, form. The base. Thank okay. you. Yes. Yes. Thank you. So no more changes. All right. So if you see, guys, again, we can use if or we can use when. Remember, we need two sentences. One sentence in simple present and the other sentence in future using will. Clear? Yes? <laughs> Clear as so, a so we have to, <laughs> I have to remember the rules, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. All right, no worries. Let's have another practice. Uh, these sentences are a little bit easier. So imagine I want to use the uh, verbs that are in parentheses. In the first sentence says, if you, the verb is treat. Can I say, if you will treat? Can I say that? Yes or no? No, it's present. Ah, very good. So what will be the correct sentence here? If you is treat. If you Uno. is treat. If you are treat. If you are treat. Hmm, what do you think, guys? Is that correct? Everybody? How can I say this sentence in simple present? If you, da -da 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 -da, your customers will, do I need the verb to be? Do I need the verb treat? Do I need an auxiliary? Simple present, what will be the sentence? If you try. Like this? Cool. No, try, try. Uh, do you mean this? Yes, maybe. Hmm, okay. But remember, guys, what is the verb that I had in parentheses? Treat. What if is the you meaning? have treat, treat, trato, it's not, it's not the meaning, treat. But this is a verb. Uh huh. What is the meaning of treat? Tratar. Yes. ¿Cuál es el simple present de treat? Treat. Okay. So remember, simple presents, guys. Don't complicate too much. Simple present. ¿Qué necesito en el simple present? Subject, verb, complement. No podemos combinarlo con el verb to be. All right, no podemos agregarle have because in that case it will be present perfect. So the sentence is, if you treat your customer well, what am I saying? What is the translation of that clause? It's a possibility. But what is the translation? Si tú tratas a tus clientes bien. Ah, very good. Exactly. What will happen? What will happen if you treat your customer well? They, they will tell their friends about you. Very good. They will tell their friends about you. Excellent. Now look at the number two. If you, I need the sentence in simple present. What is the present of spend? A spend. 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 Yes, I don't need changes. Okay, what will happen if you spend more? What do you think? What will happen if you spend more? You will be paid less tax. 
you will be. No, no, no. You, you will pay. You will pay less tax. Okay. You will pay less, less. tax. Do you agree, everybody? Yes. Yes, simple as that. Remember, one sentence is in present, one sentence is in, sim is in future. I will be asking individually. Imagine that this is an exam, guys. Let's start oh. with ta -ta -ta, Christian. Christian, what is the answer mm. in the number three? Christian, you there? You just teacher, sorry, uh, the screen, I lost the screen, but I, I am here. <laughs> okay. If workers. If workers receive a higher salary, higher salary. Uh -huh. They will work harder. Okay, they will work harder. Is that correct, everybody? Yes. Yes, we have the first sentence in simple present. We have the next sentence in future. Christian, can you pick one of your classmates, please? Yes, I'm going to choose. Nelson. Thank you. Nelson, can you tell me the answer in the number four? If you start a business with, with a lot of capital, it will become a, a successful business. Okay. It will become a successful business. Everybody, do you agree? Is that correct? Yes, Absolutely I agree. agree. That's correct. Pretty good. Thank you, Nelson. Can you pick one of your classmates, please? Maybe Fatima is there, I don't know. Thank you, Fatima. Fatima. Okay, Fatima, can you tell me the answer in the number five? If workers... Uh, B. Okay, oh. remember that B is in infinitive. What is the verb to be in simple present if I'm talking about workers? Can I use M, is, or are? Is. Is. Mm, workers. Are. Ah, plural? it's in plural. Okay, si uh -huh. dijese worker, yes, it is is, but in this case it's plural. So if it is in plural, we use R. Okay, Fatima, continue, please. Are always sick the business will lose money. Okay, the business will lose money. Everybody, is that correct? I am positive. <laughs> That's correct, excellent. Fatima, please. Uh, please. Pick one of your classmates. Isabel? Um, I think he's listener, if I'm not wrong. Uh, Herman? Okay. Herman, can you tell me the answer in the number six? Look at if the- If we don't wear a suit. Uh-huh. If we don't wear, what will happen if you don't wear? Um, you don't make. Okay, you don't make. Like this? Yes. Okay, if you don't wear a suit to a job interview, you don't make a good impression. What do you think, guys? Is that correct? No, really. Why not? In the second class, you won't make a good. Ah, very good. That's correct. Remember future. So guys, look, one sentence in simple present, the other sentence in future. 
Uh, Germán, can you pick one of your classmates, please? Um, let me see. Ivan. Thank you. Ivan, number seven, please go ahead. <laughs> okay. <laughs> if a business spends. Spends or spends? Spends. Okay. More, more money on internet marketing is it, excuse me, is will gain. Or again, again? Or gain. Is bad, is bad writing words? No, it's gain, like ganar. Gain. Ah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. It will gain more customers. What do you think, guys? Is that correct? Yes, it's correct. Totally. Ivan, can you pick the last one, please? Mm -hmm. Okay, let me see, let me see. A victim. <laughs> <laughs> Erica, Yasmin. Uh, Erica, can you participate? Or I think that ah, she's listener. Yeah, she's so a little sorry. bit sick, yeah. So sorry. Pick someone else. Um, my friend, Rosalina. Hello, Rosalina, are you there? Are you sure, my friend? <laughs> <laughs> okay he's picking a victim and he yeah. said that he's your friend <laughs> yeah <laughs> all right so what will be okay. the sentence here simple mm -hmm. present yes you are okay you, you, you are, are smart. smart you will eat fish at work i think i don't know oh the second sentence will. You, will is, is in future will mm -hmm. eat yeah okay pay attention in this sentence because this sentence is a little bit curious mm -hmm. look am i starting the sentence with if yes or no no yes. mm. donde tengo el if in the second sentence in the second mm -hmm. sentence so which mm -hmm. sentence will be in future and which sentence will be in present? Ch change. change person. Ah, okay. Let's change. So, Rosalina, in this case, the first sentence is in future. What will be, what will be the sentence? Okay. You will. Hijos. You will. You will. <laughs> Smart. If you eat, if you eat fish, fish. at work. <laughs> All right. Now that is something that you have to remember, everyone. The sentence that will be in present is the sentence that start with if, and we can switch the orders. Not necessarily. Uh, we are going to start with if all the time. We can change it. So the sentence with if is the sentence in simple present. And remember, if you have will, the verb is in infinity, basic form, not changes. So you will be smart if you eat fish at work. Sure. Sure. Yes? Okay. Could be could be explain the 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 for infinity in this in this case the B. Oh, okay. Please. Remember, yes. Remember, guys, the verb to be. Cuando decimos así, es que el verbo está en infinitive. Es decir, que no ha sido conjugado, right? Cuando yo quiero hacer una sentence in simple present. Tengo que conjugarlo a simple present. Y sabemos que en simple present tengo tres opciones. ¿Cuáles son? Am, is, are. Am, exactly, Am, is or are. Depending on the subject. But in future, 
what does the rule says? The rule says that after will, I need the verb in the basic form. Hay una diferencia entre basic form y el infinitive. El infinitive lleva la preposición to. Basic form solo es el verbo sin conjugar, pero sin la preposición to. En este caso, can I say something like you will are? Can I say that? You no, will no, are. No, no you uh -huh. are. You are conjug conjugating. Exactly. Remember, are is for present. And I'm using future. Can I say you will to be? No. No. Remember. It's you will be. Exactly. Después del will, no necesito la preposición to. Entonces voy a decir solo, you will be. ¿Entendido? Yes? Totally. All right. Any questions, everybody? Yes? Actually, no? I need to practice. Practice a lot this topic. <laughs> Yes, and we will, no worries. We can continue practicing this topic, no worry about it. So in this scenario, guys, just remember the structure. The first sentence is with if. If is going to be in simple present. And the next sentence, that is the result, will be in future. Understood? Yes. Yes, teacher. Just yeah. the last one had a trick. <laughs> it's because a of the verb trick. to be. It's in because the, the yeah. last one is a, is a trump. Yeah. For the students. Yes. Yeah. Remember, we can start with the future sentence or with the if sentence. So be careful. ¿Cuál va a llevar el future? La que lleva el if o la que no lleva el if? La que no lleva el if. Exactly. ¿Cuál oración va a ir en simple present? La que lleve el if. if. Exactly, the sentence with if. And that's all, okay? So, Now, yeah. let's stop thinking about the uh, first conditional. We are going to use it, no worries. We will continue practicing that. But we are going to learn some vocabulary and we are going to combine the two topics. Can you see the presentation? Yes. yes. Pretty good. Yeah. Okay. We are going to talk about some safety measures at a warehouse. Okay. I have two questions. A volunteer, please, for reading the first question. Can I? Yes, please. What kind of dangerous materials and chemicals may be found in a warehouse? Thank you. So imagine guys that in a warehouse, I mean, there are all kind of products. So can you think about some dangerous materials that we can find there? What do you think? For example, poison. Yes, we can find it there. Acid? Acid, acid. Yes. Or acid, I, I don't know. About acid. This. From acid, acid. Yes, totally. You can find it there. Anything else? Inflammable. Inflammable mm -hmm. Inflamed materials. Material, material inflammable. Mm -hmm. And imagine That's guys, oil. Correct. There are some materials that are very toxic too, right? Now, how do you keep your employees out of danger? Imagine you are the manager, you have to protect your people. How would you protect your employees? 
What do you think? ERP, maybe the employees need to, to use ERP, the, the, the helmet, glasses, or special shoes, jackets. Very good. And mm -hmm. um, you need to señalizar, how do you say señalizar? The, sign. Sign the, the, the areas that you mm -hmm. have the, the, the material inflammated material in your in your warehouse and also guys with the training right you need to train mm -hmm. your employees about how to deal with these materials pretty good Teacher. so that is what we are going uh, to talk uh, yes sorry sorry for interrupt you in the case of the hazard communication I think it's um, a good idea to review the uh, safety data sheet. Correct. For those, for those chemicals. Exactly. So this is not just, ah, oh, yeah, it's, it's something simple. Not really, right? Uh, in this case, guys, it's something very serious. People can die if they don't use correctly the steps to deal with these materials. So it is important, very important to identify the materials, how to deal with them, to use the correct equipment. So that is what we are going to be talking a little bit today. And look at this. Here I have some vocabulary. Let's find out what the meaning is. Pay attention to the vocabulary because later we are going to have a reading practice. And in the reading, we are going to find this vocabulary. So if I say long run, what is that? What do you think? It's like evacuation? Mm, not really. Not really. Imagine if I say Hi, run Lucy. away. <laughs> <laughs> imagine, run. imagine if I say, guys, how do you see, um, how do you see yourself in ten years? <laughs> I teacher, in ten years, I will buy two houses. Do you think that those goals are short term? or a long run? It's a long time. A long run. Uh, long and what run. is the translation of long run? Largo it's like time. a, a <laughs> carrera. It's like a, when you have a long career. Exactly. So you can say a largo. Plazo. Correct. In Spanish. Exactly. In Spanish you say largo plazo or corto exactly. plazo. If it is short, we say short term. If it is long, like here in 10 years, long run. Okay? Write it down, write it down. Then it's not we, correct, say long time or short time. What happens, not correct, say. Long time is different. Long time is like. I can say something like, hey, I haven't seen you in a long time. What am I saying there? No te long visto. Long time is, is mucho tiempo. Exactly. Mucho tiempo. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's a little bit different. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. Okay, we get the next word. Absentism. What do you think? What is that? The people, nobody in the places? When somebody is not in the place, exactly. For example, here in the class, imagine that Ivan don't connect on Monday and don't connect on Tuesday and don't connect on Wednesday. We are going to declare absentism. Understood this word? When you miss when you miss a class, for example. Exactly. Yes. If you are sick, you cannot go to work. What is going to happen? Absentism. Okay. Is it clear that vocabulary? 
Yes. Cool. Okay, equipment downtime. Hmm, what is that? What comes to your mind? Equipment downtime. What do you think? Hmm. Look at the picture. Is in reparation? Is in the workshop? Ah, so imagine, guys, I don't know if this happened to you. Have you ever been in the bank and you are waiting, but suddenly they say, hey, we don't have system. <laughs> have you ever happened to you? Frequently. <laughs> really? Imagine what happens. The equipment are not working. You cannot use the equipment. So that is equipment down time. Understood? Mm, no. It's like it's a kind of no. <laughs> it's like I'm not working, equipment not working. Not working it down. <laughs> exactly. So it's basically, guys, when an equipment doesn't work, uh, when the equipment stop. Imagine in this moment, I have my laptop, I, I'm giving the class. But imagine that right now my computer stopped working and turned off. <laughs> What will happen? My computer is down time. That means in act is not active. That is the meaning of downtime. No active. Understood? Yes. Active. Uh, no it's function. That that's the one. Mm -hmm. No function. No function. No working. No active. So imagine the equipment downtown means that the equipment doesn't work. The, the equipment downtime, the equipment downtime for different problems. Of course, everything problems. Yeah, we could be different reasons, guys. And this it could be about everything, every kind of equipment, not only computers. We can talk about different equipment that we have in a job. Mm -hmm. Clear? Click. Yes. Clear? Like. Use. <laughs> Don't say yes, yes, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Lemonade. Lemonade. Ah, lemonade. It sounds Just much lemonade. better. Okay. Now, then we have the next one. There is been. What is that? Like uh, they use the we use the inner cycle points. Exactly. This is just like a, um, a trash can, right? The place where you put the trash inside. Do you know that in every company we need to have these ones? Do you have driver beams in your company? Yes, of course. Yeah. So it's like a trash can, okay? Now, dock <coughs> doors. What do you understand by dock doors? Dock doors. Uh -huh. Any idea? It's like a bounder or in your door. According mm. to the picture. <laughs> Imagine mm -hmm. if you have That's... the warehouse. The warehouse is big, right? So we don't call it just door. We call them dock doors. Okay? It's like the big doors of a big place. Okay? If you translate it, uh, the translation can be like puertas de muelles, right? But in Spanish, we don't call it like that, right? 
We yeah. just say yeah. like las entradas, las puertas, but we are talking about not uh -huh. a simple doors. We are talking about huge door of a huge place. Understood? It's like a door that you put in your garage, maybe. Could be. It's big yes. door. It's big door. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Of course, that most of the time we use this kind of words, right? Well, we are talking specifically about warehouse. But remember, if I'm talking about my house, can I say, ah, the dog doors? Can I say that? Uh -huh. No, Not really, right? So that is the only difference. Now, yesterday we checked this word, aisles. Do you remember the meaning for aisles? Yes or no? Yes, the place where everyone walked. Yes. And remember, this applies for the bus, an airplane, in a supermarket, in a warehouse. So the space that is between two stands, that is aisle. Understood? Yes? Everyone, is it clear the word aisles? Yeah. Clear as a lemonade? Yes. Okay. Lemonade and sugar and ice. Okay. Guys, please, if there is a word that you don't comprehend, let me know. Okay. Bend over. What do you think? What is bend over? Bend over. Look at the picture. Can when you touch? You, when you do exercise, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Imagine, guys, can you touch your toes with your hands? Yes or no? Touch the fingers in the, in the shoes or the feet? Uh -huh. Yes. Can you do that? ¿Se alcanzan a tocar la, los dedos de los pies? If you do this, La yep. panza no deja. <laughs> sometimes. Sometimes. Imagine if you have a box on the floor and you want to pick up the box, what do you need to do? You have to bend over. Understood? Yes? Not it. Okay, again, imagine guys that you are working and here there is a box. Yo necesito levantarla. I need to pick it up. Okay? What do I need to do? Yes, so the car bend over. Place over and um, get up. I need to bend over. over. But let me ask you, is this the correct position if I want to lift up something no. heavy? No, no, no. It's, it is it's, not, a, it's, a, right? it's dangerous. Exactly, because you can hurt your back. So that is the meaning of bent over. Is that clear? Yes? Okay. Yes, it can. But bend over is the action. Yes, bend over. It's just it's the, the action. action that you have when you pick it up the the, the box. Mm, okay. Or something. Okay. Or, it's, or just, it's just when you do this. Cuando hacen este movimiento, mm -hmm. esta posición, a eso se le llama. It's bend over. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Now, we got the last one. The debris. What is that? When we have uh, obstacles or points when you can fall. Exactly. Imagine that there is an accident. Imagine that there is an earthquake. So we got a lot of obstacles there and they can cause 
more accidents, right? That is the meaning of debris. Got it? Yes? Okay. Is it's this with any, any material that you have inside your warehouse? Any, any, material. any material. Yes. Okay. What will be the translation? Imagine that there is an earthquake. We are not in the warehouse. Imagine that you are in your house. There is a huge earthquake and the house fell down. So, ¿qué vamos a tener? Si se nos cae la casa, ¿qué nos quedan? Debris. En translation? Escombros. Escombros. Exactly. So, that is that. Understood? Yes. Thank Pretty you. good. <laughs> okay, everybody. So, now that we know the vocabulary, we are going to have a reading practice. And in that reading, we are going to see this vocabulary. So, is that clear? All these words? Teacher. Mm -hmm. With the uh, Ben Over. Mm -hmm. um, lift, lift a box, I think. You, you, you uh, how say, uh, uh, elevate a uh, box. But the Ben Over is opposite, it's for, um, how say? Okay, or, look. There is there is this phrase pick up. Pick. Mm -hmm. pick up is the action of lifting an object. I have a box here. La acción mm -hmm. de levantar esa esa caja se le dice pick up. Pick up. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh. And la acción de doblarse, así como este hombre, a eso se le llama bend over. Bend over. Bend Es como doblar, right? Over is specifically this position. Mm. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's like our charts. Similar. In this mm. case, if, I mean, we can translate it like that, like agacharse, doblarse, right? Mm -hmm. We can use it. We can use that translation. For, uh make the como si de atar los zapatos amarrar los zapatos is um ah oh, but that is different but you can say i'm going to bend over because i mm -hmm. need to tie my shoes uh -huh. mm -hmm. okay yes so imagine if you need to tie your shoes tenemos que bend over is that clear si se les cae una moneda que tienen que hacer Agacharnos, you, Fatima said, yes, okay. agacharse. Exactly. You need to bend over. Exactly. Por una moneda, no. Uh -huh. Are you sure? Imagine if it is one dollar and you need one to take dime, a no. <laughs> Ah, You see, guys, Hector has a lot of money. He says, ah, not kind, right? Okay, now that it, the vocabulary is clear, let's read this uh, reading practice about warehouse safety procedures. So everybody, I will need volunteers for reading, but pay attention, everybody in this moment, reading comprehension, because later we are going to have an exercise and you need to understand this vocabulary, okay? This reading is on your manual, page 32. So let me scroll down. Here we are. We are going to be reading some paragraphs. Who wants to read, please, the first paragraph? Well, from here. Okay, go ahead. Uh, there is more to warehouse safety than all it means to fire codes and safety regulation. Unfortunately, too many warehouse and TPLS look at safety as meeting the minimum instructed by the law or the consent. 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 In the long run, however, a safe warehouse environment delivers important cost saving through. Higher employee certification and increased productivity, fewer works, 
place discretion and reduce absentism. 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 Um, absentism and equipment downtime. Very good. Okay, the vocabulary that we studied with which words can you identify here? Absentism, absentism downtown, equipment downtown, downtime, downtime, long run, long, uh -huh. long yeah. run. So you see, we are using that. Okay. So what is happening in the first paragraph? Can you explain me with your own words? What happens with the warehouse? But the warehouse. Why... Uh huh. The the warehouse no uses yes. the three pills. Hmm. But why do we start the paragraph with unfortunately? What do you think? Mary, unfortunately. Ah. So it says that unfortunately some warehouse and three party logistics, like they look the safety uh, measures as like a minimum instructor, right? Like, mm, it's not so serious, <laughs> okay? So that is pretty bad. Now, what happens in the next paragraphs? I will need some people to read in, please, from here until here. Who wants to read? Me, teacher. Thank you, go ahead. Don't expect employees to start with a culture of safety at work. Establishing a safety culture, including the necessary operational changes and training and education programs is, starts with you. The following are some measures you could start implementing with your team. Thank you. So imagine that you are a manager, you are new at a warehouse. So who needs to start a implementing a culture of safety you as a manager or your employees you as a manager is exactly it's your responsibility as Correct. a manager you have the responsibility you have to give the example right so in this case guys we are going to see some measures that we can take and pay attention to these ones. We are going to answer some questions later. Letter A, volunteer for reading, please. Only one. <laughs> Let's read, come on, letter A, who wants to read? Thank you, go ahead. Make sure that garbage and debris Beans are applicable through to, throughout throughout the warehouse. All right. So, what is the first measure, guys, in a warehouse? What we need to do with the garbage? Pull it out of the warehouse. Collecting the uh, beans or recycle points. Exactly. We need to put the garbage in the correct place, right? Think about your company, guys. In your company, do the employees respect this statement? Yes or no? If you have, yes, you have to. Mm -hmm. And you guys, in your company? Does everybody respect this measure of safety? Yes, teacher. Yes, excellent. Yes. It is important, okay? Now, another point that we have to consider is the letter B. Volunteer for reading, please. Okay, block access to exposing or open Loading dogs, doors. So what do you think, guys? What is the meaning of this? Uh, in, the, in this case, lo, lo, 
this loading dock is a block. Mm -hmm. Like the main entrance. ¿Cómo yeah. tienen que estar las puertas? The most important doors, the biggest one. ¿Cómo tienen que Without estar? Without blocks or free or... Okay. Exactly, because imagine in the middle of an emergency, I mean, everybody wants to run. So it has to be totally free, okay? So think about your company. The dock doors are free of obstacles. Yes, I'm free. The principal or yeah. the main entrance, yes. That's great. Excellent. Letter C, volunteer for reading, please. Uh huh. Letter C. Keep ails and pay passage ways clear up all times. So, this is similar to the previous one. So what do we need to do here? What happens with the aisles? Is this space in between uh, the different uh, blocks, for example? Mm -hmm. Imagine during the earthquake, if all the aisles are blocked, will you be able to run away? <laughs> no. No, right? And that's why many accidents happened so okay. in this case yes i uh, can say uh, caerse fall fall uh, thank you mm -hmm. or fall down both mm -hmm. so remember guys aisles or past ways they are just synonyms they need to be clear all the time Again, think about your company. The aisles in your company are totally clear all the time. Yes, yeah. sometimes. Almost all the time. <laughs> Almost all the time. Okay. Sometimes. Sometimes. So we need to be careful with it, right? Letter D, volunteer for reading. Letter D, teacher. Letter D, yes. D. Keep your back straight. Don't bend over. Aha, uh -huh. what is that? What do you think? Hmm. What is the meaning right of posture? Ah, uh, very good. A right posture. And this is not only, guys, when you are stand up, also when you are sit. Mm -hmm. What happens in your job? Do you have a correct posture a, 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 me, in your teacher. job? No? Not me, no. Why not? And the last at the end, I have a, I have a, a problem in my back and my neck because I don't have good posture. Oh, my gosh. You have to be careful with it. And you guys, do you bend over at work like to pick up something heavy or do you keep your back straight? Do you have a good posture or not? Maybe oh. sometimes when I remember that I have back straight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's inconscient that you do that. They, Bend, bend over on your back. That's correct. Until you feel the backache, you start like, oh, yeah. no, my back. <laughs> I need to do it, a good posture, right? So be careful. I need everyone. to aparche. <laughs> oh my gosh. So just imagine right now that you are here in the class. Check your posture. Are you sit correctly? Algunos hasta acostados están, right? <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not going to say the names. So do you mm -hmm. have a good posture right now or not? Mm. <laughs> I tried teaching, but it's impossible. <laughs> it's not impossible. Difficult, it is difficult. It's difficult uh -huh. But not yeah. impossible. So be careful, Yes, we guys. need a, a share, ergonomic share also. <laughs> this is yeah, the point guys. in our house. <laughs> Remember that 
after 30, I mean, empezamos con todos los dolores, right? So, for the ones that are 20s, los que están todavía en los 20s, they are okay. Los que ya pasamos de los 30s, guys, hmm, be careful with your back, all right? Now, letter E, volunteer for reading, please. Uh -huh. Teach employees to push, push manual material handling equip, equipment, equipment equipment whenever possible. Reader them full loves. Thank you. What is the meaning, guys? Hello. What is the meaning in the letter E? What do you think? You have to teach our your employees the 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 manual uh, about the manual that you have in your warehouse for some specific material or equipment. Mm -hmm. If you use equipment, you have to training in the 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 equipment, and I think that this is the meaning. Imagine, guys, that yeah, in the warehouse. Do you think that there are heavy boxes? Yes or no? Yes. 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 So you as manager, you need to teach them how to handle those equipment, those boxes. It's better if you push than if you pick, right? So you need to train, you need to teach them. ¿Qué sería mejor, empujarlos o levantarlos? What do you think? If they are heavy? Empujarlos. Push. Of course, exactly. Because if you push correctly or if you use the correct equipment, you are not going to hurt your body. But if you don't know how to do it, Ah, you will pull all the heavy equipment, all the heavy boxes, and you will hurt yourself. Okay, that is the meaning of the letter E. Now let's move on with the letter F. Volunteer for reading, please. Yes, go ahead. Is the word before lifting, lifting it? If it is too heavy or bulky, get help. All right. So what is the meaning of this one? Letter F, what do you think? Uh, the recommendation is that you don't have to lift up a lot of weight. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You, exactly. If you need help, you have to ask uh, ask for mm -hmm. yes yeah, it can be a problem with your head mm -hmm. imagine if you say no i can do it alone i don't need help no guys if it is too heavy or too bulky ask for help don't be afraid about it it's better if you ask for help instead of suffering an injury now, letter G, volunteer for reading, please. Uh -huh. Can I? Yes, please. Letter G, keep dogs on floors free of boxes, garbage boxes, bailing materials, debris, dirt, and oil. Mm, what is the meaning of this? What do you think? Keep the, the floor free of any garbage boxes or material that you have in your warehouse. Correct. So in few words, the floors has to be clean. Everything in its place. Garbage in the debris bins. All the materials in the correct position. Let's keep the floors 
clean. And the last one, volunteer for reading, please. Uh -huh. Only one, please. Who wants to read? If I don't have volunteers, I'm going to pick someone. Me, teacher. Thank you. Go ahead. Permit access to a bow floor. Racks and shelves only if portable ladders or appropriate lifting devices are available. Thank you. Imagine, guys, that you have, imagine that you are in a warehouse. In the warehouse, we have different stands. Okay? If you need to put a box over here, it will be easy, right? You are here, you put the box, no problem. But what happens if you need to put a box over here? It will be easy, yes or not? No. no. Oh, so what are you going to do? You need to use ladders, but you have to be careful with it. You need to use the equipment in order to lift the boxes. We can have those equipment in a warehouse. So you have to be careful at the moment that you are moving the materials on the shelves. Correct? Yes. So we already seen different measures of safety. Are they clear? Yes? Yes. Ready for the exam? <laughs> Let's see the new You're vocabulary. <laughs> I know, I know. Uh, I heard someone. Do you have a question? Yes, no, just, just a comment that um, a lot of, when, well, the measures that you present are more from housekeeping more for warehousing. Remember guys okay. that each each company they have their own because yes. the conditions can be different. If you work for example in an office mm -hmm. so the measures will be totally different. If you mm -hmm. work in a farm totally different. In this case because we are talking about warehouse these measures mm -hmm. are, specific, uh, are specific for a warehouse. Okay. So imagine in your company, when you started to work there, did they explain you guys all the measures in order to be safe in that company? Yes or not? What do you think? No? Or you don't remember? In my company, you say? Yes. Oh. Think about your own company. Do you know the measures of safety of your company? Yes, I remember when I worked in Unilever, for example, because it's an international company and they have a lot of warehouse. They implementing a measure. They 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 have a department for safety, health, and environment specific, and the employ employment is that's great. Is is the most important for them? the the, the safety for the their their employment. Their employees. Their employees. Yes. Great. That's good. How about you guys? Do you know all the measures of your companies? the safety steps that you need to follow? Yes, in my case, teacher, um, I work right now in that area. Mm -hmm. And the safety department of, of the company that I work and one of the uh, responsibilities is to reinforce or give uh, safety trainings to the employees. 
That is why um, I feel very familiar that information, but <laughs> we we review um, another kind of measures or we call safeguards. Mm -hmm. um, that I think that is a signing of measures, mm -hmm. but are more um, focused with the uh, construction hazards. Exactly. Um, yeah. It could be different, right? Totally. In each yeah. company, there will be different. So you see, you have a lot of responsibility because you had to teach people, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty good. Excellent. So now it's hard, teacher. It's hard responsibility because you is. have to change their mind. You have to change the, the culture the, uh, yeah, when you talk about is. the safety. And it's remember difficult. that that is difficult in our country. Like people, I mean, they don't care, yes. right? Yes. I mean, yeah. for they is like, nah, nada me va a pasar, right? Ah. <laughs> so it's difficult. It's difficult to deal with people. Imagine when do we have like um, some earthquake drill or like simulation. Do you do that in your job? Yes. 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 What do people are, do? Are uh, like an um, evacuation drills. Uh huh. So imagine. To evaluate the emergency response. Exactly. So there are some people that they are serious on it, but there are some others that they like, ay, otra vez. Ay, no, all right. So it's very difficult to deal with people. So yes, the the attitude the attitude for the people is the most difficult to to try in the in <laughs> set. Yeah. Yeah, but at the moment of the emergency, everybody wants to. Run. <laughs> yeah, everybody. <run. laughs> That's true. Okay, let's complete the next exercise talking about this one. Um, I have four important meanings here: general housekeeping. What do you understand? Look at the picture. What is general housekeeping? What do you think? Clean in general? Yes. All, uh, all the areas? In this case, we are talking about cleaning, right? Cleaning in general. Now, false and other preventable me shops. Look at the picture. What do you think? What is that? The table on the floor, you have to prevent. Exactly. Are all those accidents or falls that you can prevent? Okay. Number three, we have manual lifting. What do you think? What is that? Manual lifting? Is basically- Is it manual bend over? The bend over <laughs> that you say the, the Yes. Yeah. In this case, yeah. is when we have to do it with our own hands, but using the correct technique, right? And the last one, fart lift and material handling equipment. What is that? What is the meaning of fart lift? Look at the picture. What is that? This is the machine, the, the, the machine for this lift is el, uh, elevate. Montacarga. <laughs> exactly. In Spanish, it's montacarga. So when the boxes are too heavy, do we need forklift or manual lifting? Forklift. Totally, right? So keep in mind these four uh, definitions because in this moment, we are going to classify or the security 
measures that we had in the paragraph. And you had to tell me in which category do we need to put all of them. For example, if I had the letter A, remember the letter A when we had to put the trash or the garbage in the debris bins. Letter A, in which category do I need to put it? In the general housekeeping, in the folds and other preventable niche ups, manual lifting, or forklift and material handling equipment. What do you think? In the general the first. In the, the first general one. housekeeping? Yes. All right. Imagine in this case, yeah, we are just talking about cleaning. Now, the letter B, block access. In which category do I need to put this one? What do you think? Falls and other preventable mishaps, manual lifting, forklifts and material handling equipment. Look, I'm talking about block access, doors, when we are talking about the dock doors, what do you think? Maybe. Maybe it's false and other preventable. Or other preventable. Are you Mish sure? Pack. Yes. Everybody, sure. do you agree? Yes, yes, sure. Pretty good. That's the correct one. Okay, let's see the next one. What about the letter C? Keep aisles clear all the time. Hmm, where? Number one. General, general housekeeping. General housekeeping. Yes. Are you sure? Everybody, what do you think? Look, mm -hmm. keep yes, the I aisles should. clear all the time. For me, false and other preventable False and other preventable mishaps. And you guys? I think. <laughs> okay, Thank some you. of you <laughs> said that is in the letter A, in the, in the first one. Some of you said that is in the second one. Everybody? Okay, I'm going to put it here, like in between, okay? In between of both. <laughs> and later, if you want to change your mind, no problem, we can do it. Okay, letter D. Keep your back straight, don't bend over. Manual lifting. Manual lifting. Totally right. Very good. Okay, then we got the next one. It says teach employee to push manual material. Ta -da 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 -da. Letter E, what do you think? Manual lifting. Sure. Mm, are you sure? Okay, read it. Teach uh, employee to push manual <clears throat> material by handling equipment whenever oh, is possible. Yes. When I need equipment, is it still manual? No, no, no. It's the number, the last one. Is the ah, is it? For, for Very good. So that is a letter E. Okay, let's see. Next one, test the load before lifting. If it is too heavy, get help. What is Manual that? Manual lifting. Manual, in that lifting. case, we are not using equipment. So very good, that's the letter F. Okay, next one. Oh my gosh, we don't have a lot of time. Keep docks and floors free of boxes, so free of different materials, free of oil. What do you think? General housekeeping. General housekeeping, General housekeeping definitely, pretty good. All right, and then the last one. It permit access to above floor racks and shelves. Look, if it is possible, do you have to use portable letters, appropriate lifting devices? What is that? Or some other 
false and other preventable mishaps? Yeah. Everybody, do you agree? Yes or no? Yeah. <laughs> yes? <laughs> yes. Okay, look. Permit, Permit the access, access. Right? So, uh, we are just talking about the stands. Okay? If you need to put some boxes or some equipment over there, we need to have the access. We need to use portable leathers, appropriate lifting devices. So, hmm. Yes. Maybe for lifting material, how many equipments to? Yes, I think for yeah, because you need equipment for or do the action or the the things in mm. the warehouse. Actually, in my own opinion, it could be both, right? In preventable accidents because I mean we can prevent if everything is in order if you use the correct equipment to do it but also guys when we are talking about forklift materials is this one so I think that the last one it can be here in both pretty good all right so this guys is about security measures i know some vocabulary could be a little bit difficult we need to continue practicing it and remember this is going to be different depending on each company understood yes any questions so far <laughs> yes no. a little bit confused let's see let's see in the middle <laughs> both. it can be both too both. <laughs> yeah all right guys so unfortunately we don't have more time so i'm not going to ask anyone to stay no worries i know that it's friday i know that you're tired so you are free to go to sleep don't forget please to advance on the platform remember we just have one more week next Monday we start the last week and next Friday is the last day. Do you have any questions before leaving? No, no, no questions? Teacher, thank no, you. Teacher. All right, thank so everybody you. have a wonderful weekend. Enjoy, try to rest. And if you are sick, everybody, I hope you get better soon. See you on Monday. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you, See you. Bye. Bye. Bye.